Hello, my name is Dr. Simon Freilich, consultant in clinical neurophysiology. This video will provide you with an explanation of how diabetic neuropathy is currently treated. You can also find out more information about how diabetic neuropathy develops and the different types of this condition in a separate video by clicking on the information card above. Firstly, to be very clear, there are no magical cures for these conditions. There are no particular food substances, vitamins or exercises that will provide an immediate cure. There is no evidence for any of the alternative medicine cures such as homeopathy, Reiki, reflexology, laser therapy, magnets or crystals in helping to treat any of these conditions. The single biggest driver of these neuropathies is hyperglycemia, which means raised blood sugar levels. It is vital that optimal blood sugar levels are achieved as soon as possible. Having the right diet with controlled sugar intake will form a significant basis of your treatment, together with any of the blood sugar lowering agents you might be prescribed. This should help stop the underlying disease causing processes from continuing and will allow the nerves to gradually start to heal themselves. This is not an instant cure and can take a long time, maybe even months or years. Hence prevention of this is best and your diabetic nurse and doctors should be actively screening patients for this to catch it early and prevent it from becoming bad. The next step of treatment is to consider adequate symptom control. For patients who have painful diabetic neuropathy, this will mean medications to reduce nerve pain. Of course, these have no place in treating patients with a painless neuropathy. In England, our NICE guidelines recommend certain medications to reduce nerve pain. First line agents prescribed in the community setting starts with duloxetine. If this cannot be taken or is not helpful, then amitriptyline and pregabalin are recommended as second line agents. If these are not sufficiently helpful, more specialised advice will be required, and perhaps certain medications such as opioids, lidocaine, capsaicin, or even spinal cord stimulators might be required. Patients with autonomic symptoms may require medicines to help stabilise blood pressure if they feel dizzy when they stand up. Patients may also need to modify how quickly they stand up and might even benefit from leg compression stockings too. If the pacing of the heart is affected, regular heart checkups become important and patients might need medications to help regulate their heart rate. Patients with sexual dysfunctions might require treatments to improve erectile dysfunction in men and lubrication in women. Dietary changes might also be required if the gut motility is affected, and also certain medications might also be necessary. The next step is preventing complications from the neuropathy. For those who lose sensation in their feet, ulcer prevention is critical in reducing foot infections, gangrene and amputations. Professional nail care forms an important part of this. If patients find themselves having difficulty with their balance because of this, I usually tend to recommend that they keep their lights on in their hallways on the way to the bathroom at night. This can help to reduce falls. The final aspect I would like to introduce are disease modifying agents. These represent the latest treatments which are still being evaluated with mixed results being reported so far. Aldolase reductase inhibitors or ARIES have been tried over the last 20 years. These reduce metabolism of sugars through the polyol pathways. If you recall in the other video, these cause a buildup of fructose and sucrose inside nerve cells, which causes them to swell and become damaged. Unfortunately, only limited effects have been shown with these. Alpha lipoic acid has also been used with some benefit, but requires intravenous treatments for many days at a time over a number of months, and so is not of great practical benefit. Carnitine has also been shown to have some beneficial effects, but side effects have made this a poorly tolerated treatment. More excitingly and much more practically, there has been a recent realisation that hypertension or raised blood pressure plays an important role in the formation of diabetic neuropathy. Antihypertensives from the ACE inhibitor class, such as trandolopril, have been shown to reduce the blood vessel thickening caused by diabetes and significantly improves diabetic neuropathy over 12 months. I hope that this video has provided you with a useful overview of current treatments available.